Welcome back friends, it's Anders. Today we are making the New York Sour. I've got a little spoiler alert, it's not from New York. Just, and uh, yeah, let's just, let's just take it easy today, huh? Let's just make a drink. We'll talk about the history of it. We'll talk about how we make it and what we put in it and why does it taste so damn good. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's go make the New York Sour to the bar. The sour is a style of cocktail, and it's been around for a long, long time. Actually, it dates all the way back to the earliest publication of cocktail books, the first cocktail book in 1862, all thanks to Jerry Thomas. So yeah, the sour style cocktail has been around forever, and the New York sour has been around for just about as long. What happened is everybody loved sour style cocktails. And sour style cocktails are really anything with citrus. Think daiquiri, sidecar, margarita, which is kind of like a sidecar, all this stuff. Now, the whiskey sour was kind of the one that was, you know, uh, pioneering, you're pushing for like, I am the standard of sour cocktails. Whiskey sours were awesome. So it was only a matter of time before people started making slight tweaks and variations because this whole bartending thing was new and exciting. And one of the variations was a simple float of claret on top of a whiskey sour. What is claret, you might ask? Well, it's a Bordeaux wine. However, it's believed back then, at least where this was created, claret referred to pretty much any red wine. So it was a whiskey sour with a red wine float. Now, you would think that this was invented in New York, but, it was not. It was actually created in Chicago before the 20th century, late 19th century, and it went by a number of different names. It was called a Chicago Sour for a while. It was called a Claret Snap. It was called a Southern Whiskey Sour. My personal favorite was the Continental Sour. Kind of wish that name stuck around, but I'm guessing what happened is there were some bartenders in New York who made it popular. That is the history. Now, okay, people make this a number of different ways. Some people put an egg white in their New York sour. Some people do not put an egg white in their New York sour. Some people use bourbon. Some people use rye. You really can kind of do whatever you want. And when it comes down to like, what kind of red wine do you use? Just a, a nice one that you like. Maybe a little bit heavier if you want to taste the red wine. Uh, but it can be a fruity wine. It doesn't matter. Red wine. And uh, I'm going to make this a little different because instead of the egg white, I'm gonna do aquafaba. It's a pretty simple cocktail. We're just gonna make the drink, taste it, talk about it, have fun. So now the booze. Should I stand up now? I'll stand up now. All right, for this drink, we are gonna need whiskey, lemon juice, freshly squeezed, a rich demerara syrup, aquafaba, or you could use an egg white if you wanted, and a red wine. Whiskey, I'm using bourbon. That kind of has become standard for the New York sour, but Rye whiskey is gonna be good. Any whiskey is gonna be good in this drink. Then we have lemon, that's our sour component. Demerara syrup. Most people will use simple syrup, but I really like the rich demerara flavor with the whiskey. Aquafaba, you can use egg white if you want. You could leave this out entirely, it's fine. And then red wine. I'm using a Carmenier, which is a Bordeaux varietal, but it doesn't matter. Use a Cabernet, use whatever red wine you want. And we're gonna serve it up, so get your glass for chilled. Let's build. But before we move on, a quick word from our sponsor. Okay, we've got one minute. Today's video is brought to you by Original Grain. They make watches and other accessories out of reclaimed wood. Reclaimed whiskey barrels, tequila barrels, beer barrels. Personally, I like the tequila watch. It's got a little agave on it. That makes me happy, but they're all great watches. Use this link and use the code Anders at checkout and you will get 30% off your watch. Or you could gift it to a friend, like a friend who's always late. That's a little, Passive aggressive, but it's very generous. Uh, we've got Father's Day coming up. You could give it to your dad. Of course, my dad's probably watching this and now he's expected to watch. So I'm gonna go to originalgrain.com backslash Anders and use the code Anders to receive 30% off my watch. Ugh, love you, dad. I know there are some of you out there that are thinking, hey, I don't need watches anymore because I just look at my phone. But every time you look at your phone, you see notifications. And when you see notifications, that takes you out of the now. Then you, you no longer are worried about what time it is. You're worried about whether or not somebody hearted that picture of your cat. What I'm trying to say is watches are peaceful. I think that does about, yep, that's about 60 seconds. Thank you, Original Grain. Back to the video. Make sure we got everything here. We don't, I need to shake it. Let's start with the bourbon. One and a half ounces of bourbon. 
To that we will add three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of the rich demerara, and then half an ounce to three quarters of an ounce of the aquafaba. Now this comes down to how much foam you want. I'm gonna do half an ounce of the aquafaba. We're gonna give this a quick dry shake, meaning shake it up with no ice. It's gonna to want to expand, so hold it tight. Here we are. Now we can add ice and shake. Grab a chilled glass and we can double strain the cocktail. The double straining will help to add more air, keeping it light and fluffy. So I still have a little bit of room. We're gonna let that sit, let the foam settle. It's gonna stiffen up the foam on top. And while we do that, we can open our bottle of wine. Now you could do this over the back of a spoon, pouring straight out of the bottle, but it does help if you have a little speed pourer. All right, I'm gonna briefly explain how pour spouts work. Uh, as you pour, the wine comes out of the spout, but at the same time, air goes into a little hole at the top of the pour spout. So when I pour, I like to have my thumb over that air hole, which is going to slow the flow of the wine coming out of the pour spout. Take the back of the spoon and gently pour. It's gonna be about three quarters of an ounce of red wine right on top. You are gonna see a little patch of red on top. That's okay. Now if you want, you could add a little lemon zest on top. And look at that, this turned out really well. Here we have the New York Sour. Cheers, really pretty. I don't know what's not to like about this drink. I think if you're a wine drinker, this is clearly a good segue into cocktails. You get the bourbon, brightness from the lemon, and a fruity element that sticks with you. Oz, would you like to try this? All right. Mm, it's very tasty. Very tasty. Yeah, try it. Also, it's a fun activity to try to get that <laughs> yeah. perfect layer. I get the red wine and whiskey also. It's also very beautiful to look at. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Original Grain, for sponsoring today's video. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Make one of these and have fun. Drink responsibly. Goodbye. Cheers. Cheers. If you want to watch another video by Anders, here's the Whiskey Sour. It's in the same family of cocktails. It's old, so you can compare the video production quality <laughs> between now and then. It'll That's be a like an interesting comparison of how we've grown. You know, options. Options. <laughs>